Okay, so here's the, uh, this is the first piece that we're going to work on here. Let's actually lay this down. Now these were uh, these vertical supports, they were flame cut. Uh, this is inch and a half thick, it's 38 millimeters. Um, yeah, uh, 38 millimeter thick. Um, and I had the sides ground and um, it was really to flatten them and uh, the dimension isn't really important but it was just to flatten them and to remove all the mill scale off of the surface which is always a real drag to deal with. So, let's get that over there, let's make sure I'm in frame here, okay. So what happens here is uh, um, we're going to mill a step in the side, there's some holes that end up going in here like this. And then um, there's actually a big uh, keyway. Um, there's a keyway that you can sort of see here in the drawing, and there's a bronze key that mounts in that, and that's really what's going to slide on the on the bearing um, uh, housing. So the bearing housing it'll be steel against bronze instead of steel against soft steel against soft steel. So uh, and then there's a big tap hole up here to mount the uh, the upper plate or the top plate there. Okay, so uh, these are pretty big for the Bridgeport size machine, but uh, I'm pretty sure we can do it and get her done. And uh, so let's uh, let's cruise over there and check out the setup. All right, we got this up on the mill. Um, get some parallels underneath the strap clamps. So what I want to do is I want to align the part to the machine, and I'm just going to do that with a couple of uh, dowel pins that fit in these slots here. This isn't a real super fussy uh, alignment. I just want to establish a, a couple of datums here um, that I can work off of for the rest of the work. So I'm just making sure the studs are straight and I'm pulling up against these pins here. So we're bearing against that. Okay. I'm gonna snug these down a little bit. Now I've got dual parallels under both of these. You generally don't want to clamp over air. That means uh, unsupported material. It tends to bow the piece and it also, uh, um, you know, can cause things to move. All right, so that should be plenty. All righty. And these should come out, okay. Um, we're gonna use a, uh, one of these fine pitch ruffers here. We're just gonna come along here up to a certain point here. I want to clean this end off as well um, and I may come over here and just take a little bit off of that just to kind of establish a flat on that side too so uh, we'll see we'll see how it goes um, all right next up I want to uh, make sure that I can cover everything here and I just kind of plunked it down so uh, okay I can already see that this is close back here, so I think I will run the uh, the ram out a little bit, and that's one of the beauties of this style of milling machine is uh, you can they're really easy to just move around and get where get them right where you want them, and uh, so you don't have to screw around. Okay, that looks better. So, let me uh, explain what I was doing there a little bit. Now you see this bit sticking off to the back. It was getting close to this when I had the cutter in the approximate position uh, where that's going to be. Okay, we're all set up here. Um, we're going to set the spindle speed. I got this uh, cool little chart from uh, Dennis Nolan at uh, Niagara Tools. And um, if you go to their website, and I'll put a link in the description. Um, they give these away, I believe, uh, or you can write Dennis a little note and uh, he'll send you one. Uh, it's a nice little chart, so let's go through it here. So we're using high speed or high speed cobalt, okay, which is this area up here, and then these are carbides down here. Okay, so let's, let's figure out the cutting speed first. We're doing steel, this is low alloy, okay. So down here we read the cutting speed, which is 50 to 250 feet per minute. All right, 
Then it gives a chip load depending on the, uh, the uh, end mill diameter too, which is also important. Although I don't have good control over the feed rate here, um, so uh, we're just going to skip that part. So we flip it over now, and um, so we want to be between 50 and 250 RP, uh, excuse me, uh, surface feet. So I'm going to set the tool diameter here at one inch because that's what we have. We have a one inch tool there, okay. And then what we can do is read the, um, we want it to be between 150 and 250, or excuse me, what was it? I don't even remember now. Um, shit, Just, excuse my French there. 50 to 250, sorry, okay. So 50 to 250, that's a pretty big range in steel. So uh, let, let's look at, uh, say, 100 uh, surface feet per minute, which is a good number. So we're going to be about 375 RPM, okay? So, and then you can determine your feed, uh, your chip load per tooth and uh, your feed rate from that. These are kind of neat, uh, kind of a handout chart, but uh, kind of useful uh, getting you in the ballpark there. So let's uh, set that. Sure, okay. little juice going there okay I just want a little bit of juice here keep things cool now I just want to take a skim cut off of this end here just till it cleans up some climb cutting. Oh my god, it works. It actually looks pretty good. So, one uh, kind of tricky thing when you have burnouts like this is getting a datum and getting started. So, uh, you know, I clean this end off here, but there's no guarantee all the other ones are going to clean up at the same place, right? So it's always kind of a kind of a tricky thing. Uh, they're going to average out, but uh, um, you got to be a little bit careful with that. All right. Okay, so you can see this is the finish that's left from that uh, fine pitch roughing tool. Um, it's, it's perfectly fine for what we're doing here. This isn't a, uh, a slide surface here. We get a, there's a keyway that gets cut in this uh, later on um, that will actually be some cut in like this and then the keyway is bronze and that's the actual sliding surface. But you can see that that finish is uh, it's actually pretty good and uh, these things cut very smoothly and and uh, without complaining too much
drill up in there. So I'm just going to use a, uh, a stub drill here. I'm not even going to spot drill this. Um, this thing is nice and uh, stiff and short, so you can many times eliminate center drilling. You know, with by using a stub drill. So. Okay, here's our first hole. This is the question. So it's two inches up. There's two. And it's one inch over. Nice even numbers. I think. Hey, my uh, my little Sharpie uh, anti bozo marks are uh, <laughs> pretty good. All right. Okay, so this is the little Noga. Mini cool here. You can see I can just control that really small amounts of uh, fluid there. Make sure I'm in the right spot. 1x, 2y, yep. Alright, let's go to town here. So this next setup will be kind of interesting. Um, we have to, there's a groove, um, actually it's a keyway kind of, that gets cut here, like so. Oh, not bad, Tom. Um, and gets cut in a little bit like this, and it retains the bronze key that's actually the slide way for the, uh, the bearing housing. And then there's some, uh, there's some tap tools that go in here like that, okay? Now, originally, since I was worried about kind of standing this up and messing around with it, uh, I was going to use a, uh, a cutter like this here and just, you know, clamp it down flat on the table and, you know, motor my way through it like that. Um, I kind of rethought that a little bit because I got I have to kind of set it up that way anyway uh, to put these tapped holes in it. So uh, ideally it would be, you know, presented to the spindle like this, okay? Um, you know, vertically like that, okay? Now, that complicates the, you know, the initial setup here to kind of hold this up sideways. Um, but that's one of the beauties of the Bridgeport style turret mill is uh, they're really versatile. You can swing them around and extend the ram out and do a bunch of stuff. So we're going to do kind of a cool setup and get this thing stood up on edge so that we can access this cut the groove and drill and tap the holes. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's pull out some junk and, uh, and uh, get this thing set up. This will be fun. This problem with steel is heavy. To help me hold this damn thing up here. Somewhere in that region. So I need to have the length of travel underneath here because uh, it gets close to the, the casting. That's all the way over. That's about maximum there. Let's see what we got. So about 320 millimeters I need. Just got it there, I think. Just got it. Yeah, I think that's it. I think that's the spot right there. Might need to move the stopper a little bit, but uh, that should do it right in there. Okay, let me uh, do that. Let's 
you know, when you got big heavy pieces like this, uh, I don't know if I mentioned it before, but you, you got to be careful moving them around. They're real heavy, and if you bonk them into these edges, you can really trash them uh, pretty quickly. So you got to set them down real carefully and then uh, slide them a little bit. So. Looks like I got to go back a little bit here. I don't want to move my stop if I don't have to. Okay. So I think uh, what I want to do here is uh, I'm going to put a, uh, a fastener through uh, one of these holes into here. So uh, that'll help hold the world up here. I gotta scoot this way just to just to shade. Something like that. Forget you didn't you didn't align it, right? spot later. Let that move around. <laughs> Bastard, get out of my way. Not what you want when you're doing something heavy. Pretty good. Okay, well I think we're finally ready here. This is uh, this is uh, what's fun about the mill. Sometimes is there's some um, interesting setups. 
This is, <laughs> I'd call this interesting. So we got our cube here and we're attached here. We get an angle plate and we're clamped here so we can resist any thrust that way. The angle plate is clamped down. The cube is clamped down. Then I added another block back here. This is going to be a, uh, a stop so that when I put multiple pieces up I'll have a good stop. And this should get me actually pretty square um, right out of the gate. Um, I also slid this little guy up um, so that this stupid heavy thing when I put it on there I got something to kind of help hold the weight uh, while I get the fasteners in. Um, and I'll, I'll bring the camera up over the top so you can see behind here. We got a couple of cant twists here holding this to the angle plate. I could use a toe clamp down here but uh, the cant twists are pretty good for this kind of stuff. So now we can mill our groove, drill and tap our holes and then just flop this piece out and put another one in and, uh, and keep going. I'll check the second one and make sure that uh, it's you know, kind of straight with the world before I uh, tear into them all. So. And then you can kind of see the uh, these clamps holding the cubes down, the toe clamps holding the angle plate down, and then and then and then. Alright, let's do some milling.